Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2020. This is Career Mode. It's episode 103. We're at Richmond for the World Championships. We ride with Joseph Berry, top time trialist of the U.S. as I run the U.S. team. Uh, none of my team members have qualified for the individual time trial. We're nowhere near good enough. Barry is one of the favorites, and it's in Richmond. We're home for this one. So can the home team take victory? Uh, it's it's actually going to be close. Joseph Barry comes in with a plus four race day condition, which is exactly what he was supposed to have today. He came in with fitness peak. He came in with the objective. He came in with favorable weather conditions, all of that adding together to equal plus four. And that's what he's sitting on. So he's got an 85 time trial right now. He's got an 86 resistance. That mountain rating, though, will matter for a very, very short section. And he's going to lose some seconds there. It also happens to be right at the end of the course. And Barta just went above that little climb right before the end of the course. And having energy left to the finish line, Barta had it. He gets 20th, 237 down, but he was the weakest time trialist. Haga and Craddock, I got both of them within 200 meters and 500 meters of the finish before they ran out, but that means they lost just a few seconds. Haga is still in the top 10 in 7th. Craddock was top 10, but he slipped to 14th since then. Right now it's Eve Lampart on top, and it's Joseph Berry to the finish. You can see we've already conserved some energy. We've got a little bit in the bank, and that's all I need. I'm going to go a few more kilometers on a 74, and then we should be able to ride 75 the rest of the way. I've Whoa, carefully practiced this out the with the three riders who have already gone. Haga, of course, that 200 meters we came up short. Well, the difference was Haga was 75 all the way to the end, so Barry going 74 for a little while is going to conserve that to three percent of energy that should get us to the finish line uh, leduc of canada just went top by 10 seconds ahead of lampart but of course the favorites well the favorites are are the ones out on course right now still barry's wearing the number one jersey i think he actually is the defending champion i i do believe he won it this last season it would be really nice if there was some checkpoints, even just one or two along the way, so you can measure your progress. There's not. It's just straight to the finish. Penultimate uphill section. And he's definitely got that spare energy that he needs for that finish. Not quite sure what I'm talking about from the mini-map. There it is. Decent little uphill right before the finish line. And it, it drains energy quite quickly, especially when you're not a top lower. climber. Sijek goes top by half a minute. Asgreen jumps into third. And Knopf? Thor Knopf in fourth place. We've got a couple of regen riders very much at the top of the standings. Quite a few seasons in now. All right, here we go. Set up for the end. The Little downhill. Campenarts goes top. 25 seconds clear. Times are coming down, 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 down. And we're going to attack to the end. 99, here we go. So, oh, second place. Campanars with the victory. Barry takes second. 20 seconds down on the count back. Good result. Not a win. Campanarts, very deserving. Multi-world champion, though. On to the world championships now, the road race. And this is a revolving circuit with some serious climbing. Uh, one very long climb, and then you've got a saddle in the middle with a quick downhill section and then another steep uphill section before you then descend again. But the descent is not that long, so recovery, getting the heart rate down. Early stages of this race, not too difficult. But as this race goes on, as the pace picks up, Heart rate won't drop below 140. It's not long enough to bring that down to calm the body. So 
there won't be much in terms of recovery. So sure, we'll, we'll get through the first five, six laps or so without much damage being done. But as we hit the middle stages and that race, uh, the race pace picks up just a little bit, we're going to start seeing riders drop off really, really quickly, especially non-climbers. Now, as the American boss, I have picked riders that can climb for the most part. There's a couple punchier guys. Kevin from Mark, our lone representative from our team that is here. There was really only one or two choices that might have been better in a pure climbing sense, but they lacked resistance. And resistance is going to be a real factor here. He also has punchiness gives him something a little different and when my choice was ultimately down to the last couple being a Kevin Vermark or a TJ Van Garderen who's a 72 overall and Vermark's a 77 overall to me the choice was pretty clear. Uh, Simmons goes down in a crash as the rain begins to fall uh, he is trying to recover here on this secondary part of this climb, and he's now into a large group as there was a second crash. He was solo, but the other eight riders pick up with him. Ah, they're getting close now. Uh, we have just three riders in the break, and it's only a minute 18 gap, so they, they really have not opened up much at all. I haven't seen Simmons go on front, so an 81... Seems to be a bit light for the pace, which means the peloton itself, you can see, is still going very fast. Reset to an 80, we're already seeing that fatigue factor set in. And we're only through two climbs. So this break is uh, doing some devastating damage, actually. Simmons not one of the top guys. He's one of those punchy ones like Vermark, and actually even better. Better climber, better punchy we would take Simmons over over Vermark if we had the choice between the two as more riders going backward. 13 here in the back. More behind us now, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure they're gonna make... That they're in the same place they were a lap ago. They have not gained any ground. They actually might have lost a few seconds, maybe 10 seconds from where they were last time. Let's go ahead and not lose everything by getting so locked into uh, Simmons. And this race is intense enough. There is no breakaway. And it's still working hard. Uh, Dana is going to be the latest one to start going backwards here. Simmons. It's actually a really good time for Simmons to the riders have taken their foot off the accelerator. maybe Either do something. Hot, no, or no that's not going anywhere. Dash. Dana somehow is still here. He's got just a tiny bit of energy. Wow, are we at that point already? We need water. 180k to go, only the fourth lap, and we're desperate for water. Uh, it's certainly not going to be a Dana who is toast. Sleeper's quite tired. Vermark is the other one and actually doing quite well. A lot of zeros, not great race day conditions today, actually. Uh, kind of across the board. There are some guys on Fitness Peaks, so uh, this U.S. team, uh, I'd have to say expectations are going to be pretty low for this race. Mark still going backwards trying to get water. So that's going to be painful. I'm feeling there might be a few guys going backwards before long. How are we doing? Simmons! Simmons about to make contact. He's in that chase group. They've... Oh, no wonder. Hershey, Pollitt, Sijek, Pedersen. <laughs> no wonder they're still making progress, but not there. They're not there yet, and he's not going to have much left in the tank when he does make it. Okay, the water part's taken care of. Our mark made it back to the front. And Simmons has made it in contact. They're moving along at a fair lick. You've just got Gentle now, on. though. You got some uh, recovery to do in a race where recovery is really not happening. Brings Peloton back up to 99 as some of those contenders make their way back. <laughs> oh my goodness. Simmons falls again in the same place he did last time. And that's it. He is definitely done now. Sleeper just fell. And more. No, just Sleeper. Simmons goes by. 
uh, there's another crash. Okay, this is starting to look like, uh, go, go, go. This, we got a Peloton at 29, and Coos is, there you go, it's 26. Uh, this is starting to look a lot like, uh, the British World Championship two years ago. Absolute chaos in the rain. Come on, Coos. Come on, Coos. Regain contact. Oh, he's got a 68 for a flat rating. There we go. Back back in there. 27. Uh, there's 54 right behind, though. That's not good. Uh, let's get for Mark on Breck. Right? Or is it Coos that we should be protecting? No, it's Breck. Definitely the stronger climber. Uh, team's going to be riding for Palace today. Uh, the Americans' best rider, the best hope, not here. Uh, that's McNulty. McNulty well into the 80s on his climbing. Paula's second best option is an 82.77. Not far off from where McNulty is, uh, but it would have been much better having both of them here. It does come back together. Pace had lifted a little bit, so now it's 98 in the peloton, and actually that brought back Simmons, Dana, and Sleeper. Sleeper going to get water automatically. Not a terrible time to get it. It's a little soon to get it. It's only been 40k. Next lap would have been the better time for that. But he's still on that automatic duty. Dana returns to cover Paulus. Uh, Simmons, let's get you on protection of Coos. We'll swap things out after Sleeper is done here. Here's a new attack, new breakaway forming, There's two riders going away, Ballerini and Cook. Wow, pace really lifted, now it's up to a 118. This is a very different race than it was, and it's allowed for recovery. But you can also see a lot of those yellow bars, nowhere near full strength. So that tempo through the first half a dozen laps absolutely destroyed a lot of riders uh, sleeper let's take you off auto and let's swap you out with let's see dana for mark or simmons we want to swap out simmons there we go 114k to go and we're sticking at that 118 huge gap behind us those riders that are behind will not be making it back uh, those gaps are just getting larger and larger and larger. One rider dropped this time. We have five laps left to go. You got to expect we're we're going to be at that pace lifting period here quite soon. We just kind of did it in the early phase of this race instead of in the middle phase. Okay, here's that pace lifting. You could see just how much uh, some of these riders are struggling all of a sudden. We gotta try to keep these guys off that outer line. See how quickly Coos was starting to go backward. And we're down to no breakaway and 103, 102 now in the peloton. All right, Dana is fading, uh, and the field just split. This may, some of these guys are going to come back, but I think there will be another split in this. There is 39 riders now at the front. Chase group pulls it back. we got 75k to go. It looks like we need water again uh, once we get to the top this time because it's too late to do it now. We're going to have to set ourselves up to get somebody on that task. Uh, I want to say one last time, but I don't know. We've made it four laps. All right, Simmons on the task. Yo-Yo's back up to 98 riders. Not good timing on that because we might see some splits, and he might be caught behind it as he tries to get the water. And he is caught behind a split. He's still tasked on the water right now. There's the connection. 
No, he gives up on it. He gives up on it. So we don't get water at the front. Now it's connected. And he's going to have to go again. Okay, he's got water. But we're going to hit the hill fairly soon. He's got to get at least halfway through this group if he's going to have a chance of recovering and getting up there. Coos has drifted back a little bit, but Simmons makes it where he needs to be. This time he got the water and actually late enough now where these guys are going to be good to go till the end of the race. So not a terrible thing that happened there. Peloton down to 78. The riders that are being dropped right now are not due to a single split. They are due to fatigue. So we can expect that we're down to the last 78 contenders. And Dana has gone out the back. Or that was already a while ago, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a little while ago. Okay, Sleeper is nearly done. Let's use his gel. Coos has been a little bit far back for my liking. He's not that great of a climber. Okay, we see a split that may or may not hold. They are closing the gap slightly. Pulled back about six seconds. And at 42, they're just off the back. It's opening now, though. 53 seconds. Gap has jumped about 15, 20 seconds now. This could be it. Final 48. Coos, I don't know why you're hanging back so far consistently. Let's bring you up towards the front with your teammates. All right, here, ha here we go. Sleeper. Going backwards, and yes, that gap really opened minute 54. So that chase group just did not have enough power remaining uh, t to cover it off. So we're down to the final 48. Pace not that bad right now, surprisingly, considering we're on the penultimate lap. Figured this is where the moves would really begin. I could be in contention for this thing, considering how many riders I have left. But Sleeper hanging on, and that's that's a sign that there is some fatigue in this field. Oh my, that's a spectacular my part falls, but he's already well off the back. Alright. Acceleration. Acceleration, going for the win, last moment for here. So we want Paulus. I want him to follow Vermark right now because Vermark is the uh, fast man. Breck, though, is. Yeah, there you go. And Simmons. Simmons. Oh, Simmons is a little bit far back. Who is up a little higher? Coos is. Alright, we're going to use Coos for now. We're right at the top, I and mean, the top's right there. The pace seems much too Six riders off the front, and we are the seventh. Oh, sleeper falls. What's going this guy, on? Are that's his the third Certainly fall, second fall of the day. Set him to auto. Who has gone down with him? Lawless, and one other, but we're seeing big splits back here. And it's suddenly just 22 chasing those front six. Coos doing the work. Simmons, we need to swap this out. Who is better on the flat? Oh yeah, definitely Simmons. So Simmons, I clicked on your gel. Guess not. 97, take over. Do this chase on the flat. We do not want to let those six get away. The good news is these six are wasting some energy. Tish Benut, Yershav, Madawe, Hershey, Toynes, Formulo, Zeta doing the chasing. Here's how Zeta looks these days. 83 flat, 79 cobble. Still not great everywhere else though. He hasn't changed much. Uh, we've caught him and it's down to 28 riders. Uh, Simmons is done. But we'll keep him on a 99 for the moment till there's a reason for uh, Coos to take over again. Final 16 kilometers. I'm already set up in a sprint train. Uh, Vermark is going to swap behind. He's got a chance to win this thing as a puncher who's on an 83 punch. 
if he can handle the climb. Palace, I know, can handle the climb. For Mark, I'm not sure. And we're going to make it difficult. Okay, Koos. We're going to use your gel. We're about to start the climb. And Koos, 95. Here we go. Simmons is done. I've got four riders in contention here. And we're going to go hard. It's 28 overall. Final primary climb. Down to 24. Simmons, one of those who is dropped. Contenders. And trying to go goes. for it. it go. Hershey. Yershov. Matoe. There's your punchy guys. And they're going for it right now. Bad move for them because they have no help. They have no support. Also, Tish Benut. And you can see how they have, oh, ooh, they have opened some space. That's because Brex out of red bar. The finish line is getting close. The and he's still got a little yellow. It's 19 side. chasing four now. Fortunately, we're doing all the work for everybody else. Breck is done. Breck is done. On to Palace. 9k to go. Acceleration by and we've Benute. set up uh, for Mark. We have not really set up for Mark terribly well. He is quite exhausted here. I think Palace might be the better threat. But it's now 7 chasing 4. Top 10 is looking likely. Four chasing four. For Mark, done. Palace is gonna have to go solo. Falling behind. A team leader is falling behind. And he has made contact with Hershey. He's in the front five. He is recovering slightly. It's one K to go to the finish. Can he beat Hershey to the line? He does fourth place. Oh, where's the line? Where's the line? That was the start line. He's still got him. We're going to get fourth place and sixth place. Or will we? Go, 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 go. Okay, he's got it. Oh, White Kankis! <laughs> it's White Kankis in seventh. Valentin Mataway for the win. Yershov second. Panute finishes the podium. Paulus, we are able to grab fourth place with him. Vermark couldn't quite make it over the climbing. He slips down just a little bit, but still a solid finish for our team. Personally, he gets sixth place. His teammate, White Kankis, comes in just behind him in seventh. Great result for him. Uh, Zeta took 16th. Breck took 20th for the Americans. Koos 22nd. Really good result, especially considering we were missing McNulty. Now, we didn't see our top climber, Rodriguez, at the race because, well, he's busy at the Crow race right now, racing for our team. After three stages, after a climbing stage in which he just claimed victory, he is now the overall leader of the race, though it is still quite close, and there are still a few stages left to go in that race. But now that the worlds are behind us, our next race that we're going to participate in and our final race that we will participate in this season is Il Lombardia. We'll open with that next time and we'll do our transition between seasons at that point. Uh, first piece of news is our single rider leaving us, Dakari, uh, Dakari Rainsford, is heading to NTT. NTT bouncing back they dropped all the way to continental they're going to be back in continental pro next season and they are up right around where we are we have continued to slip uh mckinney has gone to rally so that was the guy i wanted to get we didn't get him because we only had 2500 left he wanted 7000 couldn't afford him we end up with three sprinters signed and he would have been one of three sprinters signed, so it wouldn't made an impact in any way. Now, uh, the bad news, good news. We are still well down in the order. We still have not climbed to that 77 plus, but we are very, very close. 
I know this because we actually raised our index a few days ago. Vermark is the reason for it. Uh, Vermark has leveled up. He added one point to Hill. I think he added a point or two to resistance. Stamina might have gone up by one. It was not, however, to push him to a 78. It pushed him to a higher 77. Decimal point wise, does it show up? But it does show up in that index, it's just hidden visually. So whatever decimal point we had there has risen. I'm guessing it's probably a 76.8 or a 76.9. We need another level up from those top three. Now, the, the more disappointing news from me is that finally, and this is good news, bad news, by the way, finally, we have seen a change in the guard. Remember, August 1st, all of those 73s we had, none of them, not one, had eclipsed to 73. They were all still stuck on 73. All of a sudden, in the last almost two months, that has changed. And in a good way, why can't this? A 75 now. He jumped two. He is quite punchy now. And can climb a little bit. And has some speed. He's a punchy sprinter. I like that combo. 67 cobble uh, as well. Makes him dangerous in a number of ways. Danny Ginn has hit a 74. Pretty good climber. Decent GC contender, but the resistance a uh, little off. Millar. 76 74 with the mountain resistance very solid support climber and moreau 73 73 very balanced in so many ways he's becoming a very good uh, all-around rider so four guys have suddenly jumped to that mark but our man that we uh, signed on still is 76 and that's hurting us uh, ranking wise you can see we are now right towards the top of the three and a half stars i think 77 is four stars is what i'm assuming so we get that level up and you can see us pushing definitely into four stars how far though how far into the four stars do we push i don't know that's i think that's where we're at we are still in a shout we still have a chance it's going to come down to Michelle Gazzoli and whether they can level up or if Pablo Rodriguez can push into a 78. One of those two things is going to have to happen for us to have any chance. So we got a single level up so far, but it was still contained within the same level. So he gained a third to a half a point, which means we gained a little bit. Uh, but our top three guys are what we're measured by. And the disappointing part is we would be comfortably Continental Pro if I had not signed Gazzoli. And I'm not happy with the money we spent on Gazzoli. I don't, I'm don't. i not unhappy to have Gazzoli. It's not that Gazzoli won't help, but Gazzoli is not an ideal rider for me in any way. And for 22000 way too much. And at 26 isn't going to develop much. So overall, I'd really have preferred to hang on to that money for next year. But I really thought we had a shot at getting into World Tour with that one more piece. Because a few seasons ago, this would have been enough. We had a, uh, let's see, what did we have? A 75 in Banaszek. Or was it a 74? Uh, Berador, if you remember. And then we had from Mark, Tentoni, and uh, Zeta. For Mark, I think it was actually fourth at the time. I think for Mark was a 74. Badajek was a 75, I believe. Tentoni was a 76 or 77. I think he might have been a 76 at the time that we made it up. And then we were up to a 77 or 78 with Zeta. We were below where we're at right now, I think. So very disappointing that we had that happen. I mean, we lost a full star. I think we went from four down to three, so we might have just been 77. And right now, it looks like a just 77 may, may be enough. Not a couple tenths more than what we have right now, but if we add three to four tenths from where we're at, I think we're in. So 
we've got a couple weeks, but a couple weeks is not long. Uh, and Gazzoli, I think, is going to end up hurting us more than helping us, especially looking at, finally, the development within the team. If Waikinkis was already a 75, I don't sign Gazzoli. I don't. Uh, I sign, uh, what was his name? The the sprinter we were just talking about. And maybe, you know, we take a look at a 74, 75 somewhere else who's like, say, a classics writer. Because I need, I need a good classics writer. I have a couple guys with Cabo ratings, but they're not good classics writers. They're support classics writers. So somebody actually capable. Losing Zeta, right? We haven't had a proper replacement. We've certainly done something about the sprint. We've added pieces, with or without Gazzoli. Uh, Reykjavik, if we had the, the Japanese writer, Makoni or whatever it is, if we had those two and not Gazzoli, that would have been a proper build of our sprint team. And then a, a cobble writer. That would guarantee we're Continental Pro next season relying on the 75 and a couple 77s, we'd still have a 76-point index, but we'd be maybe four spots lower, five spots lower. So middle Continental Pro instead of near the bottom. But I don't I don't know. If we make it, if in the next couple of weeks, one of those guys, for Mark just did, so it's not going to be him, if Rodriguez or Gazzoli make that jump to that next level, a solid jump, which would bring our average up by at least three-tenths, that would be uh, huge, right? If we actually make it back to World Tour, it's where we belong. And I think I have the sustainability factor down now that we could recover and, and still do that. So if we make it, the Gazzoli signing is genius. If we don't make it, the Gazzoli signing is probably the worst signing I've had since Carlos Rodriguez. And because of the money involved, I'd say it's the worst signing we've had. Fingers crossed that the next two weeks go our way. Uh, we have that one final race of the season in Lombardia that we'll partake in. And so we'll find out next episode if we make it or not. Right now, not looking so good for Mark. Not quite the hero he was a couple seasons ago where he leveled up just in time and saved us and got us into Continental Pro. It could happen again. This time it's going to have to be Rodriguez or Gazzoli. Rodriguez leveled up once very, very early in the season. So he could, especially at a 23 and a new, new gen rider first year, he very well could level up again. Uh, or Gazzoli, who's been sitting on that 76 ever since we first took a look at him five months ago. Is he due? Well, he hasn't leveled up in a while. Like I said, he, he leveled up very early. Very well could level up again, especially as a first season kind of guy. So I would bet my money that if somebody were to level up, it's going to be Rodriguez. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.